Welcome everyone, Kevin Carpenter, and today I'm I get to talk with Robert Secord, and I kind of find this really cool because I you know I saw your talk in 2023 at C++ Now, um, Robert, and everything that I know that you do with the the C Standard Committee because you're the convener for the C Standard Committee. Ah, C Standard Committee. I should say that three times fast. Um, you work for uh, Woven by Toyota uh, with C language standardization, right? Uh, I'm the standardization lead. So I, I do uh, safety standards around C, C++, other languages, but also, uh, you know, all their internal standards work, process stuff, uh, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever's needed. So I have to ask, you know, with all the stuff that we see with embedded with C++ and such, what, you know, I just want to ask first off, what is the advantage that you feel C still brings to the table? Um, you know, because I've seen a couple of your talks where you talk about portability. What's the big part that keeps C still really heavy in use? I mean, aside from, because this is new development we're talking about, right? This isn't just maintaining mm. old code. Mm. Yeah, you know, so... Um... You know, C versus C plus uh, plus. C is is a simpler language, uh, and it's it's closer to the metal. Uh, C plus uh, plus C programmers uh, tend to dislike uh, heavyweight abstractions, where you write some code and a bunch of things happen. It's not really clear what happens, right? They really want to uh, have control over you know, how many, how many, uh, instructions are executing. So they, they really like to know, uh, you know, what they're getting and, and have that, uh, degree of control that, that, you know, other languages sometimes lack, um, you know, compared to Rust, for example, um, you know, Rust sounds like a, like a safe choice to some people, but for the automotive industry, it's a very, it's a very risky choice. Um, you know, uh, because they've been building automotive software in C and, and more recently C++ for some time. And, and there's a, there's a whole infrastructure around that, you know, uh, and it's more than just the compiler, right? It's the, right. it's the tools, it's the, the, the safety standards and uh, all, all the mechanisms that uh, folks uh, need to feel comfortable building safety related, uh, you know, software systems. Okay, that makes sense. And so, you know, I forgot to say, but the reason I have you here is because you're running a class at ACCU called Secure Coding in C and C++. And I seem to remember that you have a book of a similar title, along with oh, yeah. other books. Yep. Here. There yeah. it is. And it, was it makes a great Christmas present. Your, your spouse would love to receive one of these. And it's interesting because I was just talking with Mike Shaw and even, you know, Mike Shaw, you know, instructor, he, he's like, I got Robert's book sitting right here on my shelf because I was talking about how we were going to chat today. And so, hmm. um, so that's what your class is about. And when it comes to secure coding in C and C++, when I was looking at the outline, there's a lot of it that seems to be based around integers. Yeah. Well, so normally it's a five day class and, uh, so, but, you know, to me, the, inter, uh, the, in, the inter, integers are probably the most interesting bit. And so I, you know, I cut out the other four days. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it kind of, uh, it, uh, it might start a little suddenly, but I, I added a, a few uh, slides at the beginning to kind of ease us into it. But what I found, uh, so I've been teaching this probably since about 2005, I guess about 20 years now. I was teaching it at a... Uh, Carnegie Mellon University in the School of Computer Science, and also in the uh, as a graduate course in the in the uh, Information Network Institute there. Uh, but you know, just going out uh, and teaching professionals this, it's it's amazing how many people don't really understand integer behavior, and not just like newbies, but like seasoned uh, professionals, you know, gray beards. And um, uh, I, I I sometimes give these classes, you know, and I'll say something. And I think that'll surprise people. And I look and they're all yawning. And then I'll just say something that I just think everyone knows. And then I'll turn around and all the jaws are dropped, right? And they're like panicking. And I'm like, oh, I guess you guys didn't know that. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And uh, the thing about integers is, is 
they are they are ubiquitous. You can't not uh, you know deal with integers. Right. Uh, and they're so ubiquitous that you can't like if you're dealing with a function call, you can stop and you can look up the API and make sure you're you you, you know you you know how it returns an error. You know how to deal with that. But integers, you just have to understand them because you know there are ten or fifteen of them every line, right? So you can't stop and reread everything about integers. You know, every time you use one, so you really just need to understand it. So, so to me, you know, this is the day that's the the most critical, and most interesting day in in the five day course. Gotcha. So that makes sense why you would pick to do the integer part. Um, but that said, so can you give me some, ex you know, all right. So there's a book I did read on secure coding where they talked about like um, the Mars Rover when it comes down to, you know, errors versus failures. And then one of your talks I was watching today from NDC Tech Town, I think this last year, mm -hmm. you had a slide where you were talking about errors versus failures. Um, so where I'm trying to go with this is real world examples. So in this book that I read, they were talking about, you know, you can get an error, but a failure has to be controlled. Failures happen. So I guess the Mars Lunar Rover would reboot like 20 times a day because that's just how they solve that particular thing. But what are some examples of integers causing failures? Yeah, well, there's the... Um... There's the Boeing uh, 787, I think, the newer airplane, the, the really yep. large one. Um, they had a they had an integer wraparound bug in one of the one of the flight components, and it was it was in redundant systems, but uh, you know it, it was exactly the same bug in all of them, so they all wrap around at the same time. Uh, and so basically, if that integer wraps around. While the plane is in flight, the, the plane will no longer be in flight. Oh. Um, I I think I said crash to the ground, and 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 someone at a class once objected to that, and they said, no, they don't. They don't just fall to the ground. They they sort of spiral downward. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay, I guess that's that's different. But um, so yeah, so so that plane, uh, they basically have to turn it on and turn it off again every so many days before the engine <laughs> wraps around. And that's done as part of the regular maintenance of the aircraft. So, um, yeah, and that's just, that's just one example. I mean, um, th there's, there's kind of a famous one, except it turns out it's not actually an integer overflow. The, a famous one was the, um, uh, the Patriot, um, batteries that were defending the barracks in Iraq back in the Gulf war. Um, they failed and, uh, and a Scud missile hit, hit one of the barracks, killed a bunch of, uh, American, uh, soldiers. And, um, that was kind of attributed to integer error for a while, but turned out to be, a basically, a a floating point to integer conversion error. Uh, and, and so what was happening is they left the battery on for too long. Uh, they had a, run, a long running loop using these floating point values and, and the precision uh, would sort of degrade the longer they were using it. And eventually the precision would degrade to the point where the, 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 the Patriot batteries could no longer intercept the incoming missiles. And that's how the crash occurred. Oh, wow. Uh, so that ended up being the same, same repair. They, they were like, well, you have to turn it off and turn it on again every, every once in a while to reset all the counters uh, but that was a long time ago. I'm sure they've uh, patched that in the field now, so it's not, no longer an issue. So in regards to your class, you know, there's obviously, I think of the overflow and the wraparound issues that we have with integers, but I'm guessing that there's more about the class that can be applied to coding overall and not just, you know, secure coding, things that you can do to make your code more secure and not just integer specific. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot, you know, I mean, so, so one of the reasons I, I get into the integer, so the first day I talk a lot about strings and buffer overflows and, and how those can be exploited. But when you think about a buffer overflow, basically what you're doing is you're taking a pointer and you're adding it to an integer and then you're either reading or writing memory of that location, right? Yeah. So if you don't understand integers and you, you've you lost control of what value is stored in that integer, right? Uh, now you've no idea where you're reading or writing memory. And so uh, that could easily be uh, either buffer overflow where you're writing to memory, or it could be a memory leak where you're, you know, you're, you're reading bytes that correspond to, uh, you know, a key or something like that. And that's, uh, that's, uh, that's what caused the heart bleed vulnerability, for example. Right. 
so so it is like really integral. I mean, at one level in C, you could view all vulnerabilities almost as being reading and writing outside of the bounds of an object you intend to, to you were trying to read or write from. So, uh, and it, you know, so it's critical. It's not well understood. Uh, it's ubiquitous. It's got kind of all the check marks that make it a uh, really critical area to, to understand. And so I'm, I would, uh, I would guess that as you're going through and as you're looking at these different bugs, you're also showing ways that you can write your code more securely. And that's that part where I'm like, even though it is with integers, you're going to be able to translate this to other areas of your code overall. Right. Yeah. They'll, they'll always, you know, yeah, we'll always have kind of, I mean, the basic, outline of the book and the course is, you know, I kind of talk about a subject a little bit, give a little bit of background. Uh, then I show some kind of common errors that, that might occur. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I show how those common errors can uh, translate to vulnerabilities, how those vulnerabilities might be exploited. And then we'll start to talk about mitigations. And, and we'll talk about mitigations at multiple levels. So we'll talk about them at the, you know, the programming level, how to write code that, you know, won't overflow, uh, how to write your code so you don't get caught by integer promotions or, you know, other conversion errors. And, you know, then we'll also show sort of higher level ways to deal with integers. So tools you can use to detect, uh, you know, uh, problems, uh, different sorts of libraries that you can use instead of just uh, plain integers. So we'll, you know, we'll cover the mitigations from sort of a, a range of angles. And so that being said, you know, applicability wise, I'm guessing you would under, you know, because we use integers in every language that we have and integers are just part mm. of the processor overall. I mean, it's something that we deal with. So I'm applicable to other languages, I would guess as well. Well, it's, it's, it's pretty much the same for C and C plus plus. So, um, but that's, that's in the course title, right? Uh, other languages, it doesn't always translate that well because uh, different languages have different, uh, models for how they they treat integers. So, okay. uh, I think I was just looking at Rust yesterday, and you know they uh, they just uh, for, they have signed integers and they'll silently wrap around. Now oh. now in C, now in C, signed integer uh, overflow is undefined behavior, right? right. Which uh, creates a whole raft of, of other issues. So uh, so other languages are you know have similar issues, but based on how the language is defined, um, you know, really, you know, you have to understand the behavior in that particular language and you have to understand the, the, the unique problems that get, that arise in those languages. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately with security, you know, the devil is in the details. Um, Agreed. Uh, I, I've, I've been asked for decades, you know, can you just build one secure coding course that covers all languages. And for decades, I've said no. I mean, I understand the, <laughs> you know, the, uh, you know, the benefit of just developing one course that you can sell to anyone. But uh, unfortunately, that that's not helpful. Yeah, as, as you were saying that about Rust, it's like, I, I almost wonder if I prefer the fact that I know my language is going to fail if I get a, a rollover on an integer, or what I wanted to silently you know, go back to zero, that might actually create even more problems for me in some way. Mm. So, um, well, that's the fun thing about C is that it could do, uh, either of those things or pretty much anything else oh, because, wow. because it's undefined behavior, which just means that, uh, you know, the compiler can just do whatever it wants. Gotcha. So the C, um, the cert C standards, tell me about cert that way a little bit. Yeah, so I, I worked at uh, the Software Engineering Institute uh, and the CERT division for uh, 23 years. Uh, I left there about 10 years ago. And um, while I was there, I started writing secure coding in C++. C++. That got me interested in C standardization. Uh, I was looking at the what, what's called the underbar S functions now, that is Annex K of the C standard. Uh, and I started, I found some bugs with it. So I was communicating with this guy named uh, uh, Randy. And Randy was a independent consultant who was working for Microsoft. And so he, he said, yeah, there's this guy in Pittsburgh. He found some bugs. And he looked at it and he said, yeah, he's right. Those are bugs. 
So they kind of invited me to the C standards meeting in, um, it was in Lillehammer that year in Sweden. Uh, so I started attending C meetings and, uh, not too long after, uh, 2006, I was in Berlin, uh, Berlin and the late, uh, Dr. Thomas Plum approached me and said, you know, uh, you know, CERT should create a secure coding standard. And uh, he didn't have to say another word. Like, I was already sold. I mean, yeah. right away, you could see, uh, you know, uh, how you know how that would be useful and how that would be. Uh, it's, it's so easy to explain to people, right? They get it right away. And so that makes it so much easier to, like, find funding for it and, you know, uh, explain it to people and get them to use it. And, yeah. Uh, so we began the development of that. We went through some years, some cycles with, um, you know, with, uh, with the WG 14. Uh, I wrote one book, uh, that wasn't that great. <laughs> and then we, we brought it to a study group in WG 14. We spent another three years pounding it out. And then we came out with the second edition that's still pretty solid, still stands, uh, stands up today. Nice. Mm. Well, I guess for anybody that really wants to improve their secure coding in C and C++, and, you know, from what I've seen of your talks, have an incredible um, time learning about the integer portion of it. You have your class going at ACCU, and if anyone stays on uh, to the end of the video, we got a coupon for them for 10% off, so they can make sure to use that. And otherwise, Robert, I appreciate your time today, and I'm looking forward to seeing you at ACCU this year. Yeah, thank you. Looking forward to see you. And, uh, you know, you get to come uh, see me talk about integers and you, you get to have, uh, uh, you know, full full Monty English breakfast. So it just sounds like a great event. <laughs> yeah, that it does. I, I definitely enjoy both of those. So hmm. I will see you in Bristol. Thank you very much. Sounds good.